To some, they invoke fear. To others, they're great pets. Tonight, we take a close look at a real dogfight, a controversy over pit bulls. Como Four's Eric Johnson has the story, but we want to warn you, some of the images you are about to see may be disturbing. I can't even handle it. You know what I'm saying? They are vicious, aggressive, dangerous. They are sweet, cuddly, loving. They're a ticking time bomb. They're vilified and misunderstood. They are a menace. They are a treasure. They are the thickly muscled mass of contradiction known as the pit bull. In the early 1800s, a vicious sport called bull baiting was very popular in England. It involved the release of bulldogs on a bull. In the 1800s, pit bulls were commonly used on farms and cattle ranches to herd animals. They were even trusted to watch the children while the adults worked the field. In the 20th century, the pit bull appeared in advertising campaigns for products like Buster Brown shoes. People talk about the fact that they, their jaws lock. Well, their jaws don't lock. The truth is this dog has short, strong, highly developed temporalis muscles that are located around the cheekbone. With the pit bull, this muscle consumes most of its head, more so than other dogs. And that is why they have amazing jaw strength. Ironically, because of their size and strength, the pit bull has become a status symbol. A lot of people, this is like an accessory. A lot of people get a pit bull. It's part of their image. It's, it's just an extension, their ego. They want the dog to protect them, they, and, they, and they want the dog to be real tough. It's just a, it's a, so much to do with image. The bully breeds have once again become popular as fighting dogs, who are ruthlessly trained and then wagered on by their owners to attack other dogs for cash. What makes a pit a fighter is that he has no limits to pain. He has no understanding of surrendering to dominance. It's to the dead. The stamina that they have, the determination that they have, the willpower that they have is what makes a pit a pit. All dogs want to please, but because this guy was bred not to have a limit, he's going to place you to the dead. But you can use that same philosophy and, and give him a job and he will do it with the same determination. The reason that we're focusing on pit bulls is because we hear so much about them. And that is not because of the breed difference, the genetic differences, that's because of the way that they've been raised. Because for people, their perception is their reality. So if they perceive a dog to be bad, it's going to be bad. Many of the problems come from owners who don't know what they're doing, who are lazy, who just who don't walk the dog, don't exercise the dog, don't discipline the dog. And if you don't do those things, then you will have problems. The owners that take on these dogs need to do classes with them. Basic obedience for any dog is a must. We need to tackle the right end of the leash, which is the person and not the dog. So then the question comes, then why are we having so many pit bull attacks? This is a dog that you have to make aggressive towards people. Because humans are used to personal protection dogs, they take a dog that is so beautiful, so menacing looking, they clip the ears to make it look more so and they beef him up to make him look more dramatic, and then they teach him to be aggressive towards people. Changing the reason that this dog was created, this is why we're having a big problem in the world with dog bite. It's the people. Star quarterback Michael Vick is in Atlanta serious Falcons trouble with the law. Michael Vick pleaded not guilty today to federal dog fighting charges. For weeks, charges. he denied knowing anything about it. I won't, I won't talk about that situation right now. What should happen to them? Can a dog that's been trained to fight, been trained to kill, can that dog be rehabilitated? I don't think that rehabilitation is an option for dogs that have had this bred into them. They're not going to be rehabilitated. They will be euthanized. 
we started hearing more and more about it. And then, you know, our director started saying, hey, let's get a team together to go assess some of these dogs and see if we can help out with the situation. So in January of 2008, we rescued 22 of the most difficult dogs from the Michael Vick dog fighting case. And I knew right then and there that these dogs would make a difference. The guys that we brought back from the Michael Vick dog fighting bust um, have been saving so many lives only because for one, they stand for something. Um, you know, they're the first ones that have come out of a fighting bust have been able to go into placement with an organization, other foster groups, and other great people. Um, just by them doing that, that is saving lives. That is setting a new trend. That is showing people that, hey, these guys do need at least a chance. Give them a chance, you know? If they get that second chance, odds are they're going to make, make everybody else in their lives happier.